Well, let, let's jump into some things, guys. Um, I was telling them we're gonna we're gonna jump into Colossians and continue this in Christ study, this in Christ reality study. Um, and we're gonna kind of jump through the first three chapters of Colossians just because it's so rich. And uh, but uh, you know, just reviewing, I mean, the last couple of weeks, so this is our third part of the in Christ series and uh i mean i'm i we could do a thousand parts of it you know you could just go on forever on the all the riches that we have in him and seeing jesus as our salvation um not just the one who did the work of saving us but he himself you know and he himself being the new creation he himself being uh the whole new world and uh i mean last week we went through ephesians 1 i just want to quickly glance at that again that's so rich i mean ah and i think at the end we'll do maybe some little like question questions and response and uh maybe just you know say what have you guys been seeing in this in christ reality because there's so much i mean there's just so much um but uh you know the last few weeks even before we started this series we've just been stuck in ephesians one and so I encourage you if you and I, I say this all the time if you're new to this message if you're new to the finished work or our inclusion or you know just the riches of heaven on earth in Christ stick in Paul's epistles just get stuck in Paul's epistles um I mean even Paul said you know uh, in Ephesians 3 that the revelation that he was given had never been given before to any of the prophets any of the, uh, you know, the men and women of God, the apostles of old. Uh, and it, it, I mean, can you imagine if someone said that today? No wonder he got stoned. <laughs> he said, no one's ever showed me this kind of stuff. No one's ever showed anyone this kind of stuff. Um, but that's the truth, you know. Um, and I think, especially, you know, so many people get lost in the Bible or whatever. They're like, I don't know where to start. Or I've just seen, I've heard too many sermons. I've heard too many messages you know um i think until you get lost in the epistles of paul the rest of the bible doesn't really make sense um and i thank god you know we live in this era of revelation of you know uh, we're not living in the day of moses when all they had was well in moses's day they didn't have any of the books you know moses wrote the first five uh you know and throughout history there's been an increasing revelation well we don't have to you know there's so many pastors still preaching from isaiah or whatever there's nothing wrong with that but it's got to be filtered through the revelation of christ it's got to be filtered through and and who had the chief scriptural revelation of christ it's paul and uh i know that sounds scandalous even to some of us that grew up in the church because we're like well every book is equal and they are they're all beautifully valid and valuable it's not about trying to elevate one or the other but we understand that Jesus Christ is our lens. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. And uh, Paul unpacked the mystical implications, the cosmic impl implications of Christ, of Jesus Christ. Even more than Jesus did in his life. You know, Jesus was preaching the law and a lot of times we're preaching in parables, preaching in a veiled way. And Paul comes and declares something that's crystal clear, this crystal clear revelation uh scandalously clear and it's amazing how little time we often spend just just soaking in that and so like i've been saying i think you know just get stuck in ephesians maybe to start with of course romans is always good i mean all the epistles but i like ephesians because it's short or shorter and it doesn't spend a lot of time getting bogged down into stuff that is important at some place like practical church discipline you know structures things yeah He's having to give corrective words in almost every uh, epistle, but not in Ephesians. So it's just pure Christological air. Just, just breathe it, breathe it in. Um, so I'll just quickly read Ephesians 1 again. Hey. I mean, right from the beginning, he just says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I mean, just right there, dude. Like, <laughs> he doesn't waste any time. Just, I mean, right. if if any of us in here even believed a tenth of that, <laughs> we would be ecstatic for ages. I mean, we'd be our minds would be blown, our heads would be blown off, or this that every spiritual blessing in heavenly places is 
already ours in Christ. And so Paul just starts out basically in an ecstasy. They call the first, uh, what is it, 11 verses here, that first section, the Paul's great doxology, uh, which, you know, I'd love to hear it put into a song. Maybe Godfrey would do it, you know, somebody could put it. I mean, because he's, if you look at it, it's almost one great run-on sentence of ecstasy. Uh, he's, it's like, I think there's only one uh, period or exclamation point. Shaka. Oh, it's a lot of residual glory in here. So um, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him from the foundation of the world. So there's inclusion. There's revelation of predestination. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. There's a revelation of all the Arminian and Calvinistic theology. It's actually just summed up in Christ. According to the purpose of his will, the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. You're in the beloved. You are in the beloved. We have redemption, forgiveness, which uh, as we talked about last week, is like uh, freedom or release. It's not just forgiveness, but it's deliverance. It's, it's freedom from our sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us, uh, making known the mystery of his will, that the full, in the fullness of the times, he would unite all things in him, all things in heaven and all things in earth. And so here's this heaven on earth message. It's not just every circumstance going our way or whatever. I do believe our revelation of Christ transforms circumstances, but it's that we've been given the ultimate circumstance, which is union with him. It's just his manifest presence in us, one with us, all of heaven and all of earth brought together in him. There is no heaven far off some days, you know, pie in the sky for after you die. Of course, you may, uh, a lot of people may uh, only wake up once they experience that. But the gospel is still true now. You can wake up to all of heaven and all of earth in union. So anyway, that's some of what we've been going over, you know, and, and uh, we've been going through a, a book I've been recommending, The Claim of Humanity in Christ, which is just uh, one of, uh, this is actually Alexander Sophie Radcliffe, who is in our Kainos Quinonia group, who's a friend of ours. A lot of you guys know her, but she's... Uh, well, this book was put out by uh, Princeton Theological Press, and uh, she studied at uh, Oxford and studied with um, the Torrances and stuff. Actually, I'm trying to remember if she actually spent time at Oxford. She, she went to the University of St. Andrews. She's a doctor of theology, but um, yeah, they're both doctors. Anyway, just, you know, you see some of us, you're like, these guys need a doctor. Uh, well, we are drinking, you know, we're this drunk because... We read the Bible because we're drinking the, the, the truth. The truth actually sets you free. There's actual bliss in the truth. You know, if you meet a theologian and they're not happy, they're probably in bad theology. Yeah. You know, if they're not in the bliss and not experiencing the manifestations of Christ, then what's the point? You know, there's a lot of good information out there, but it's got to produce. And so um, in all of our studies, you know, I, I don't know. I just continue to recommend the Torrance brothers. Um, and then Alexander, who actually sums up the, this, the massive works of J.B. and T.F. Torrance in one pretty short volume. I mean, what is it? It's less than 200 pages. Uh, yeah, another really great one is, if you want to go right to the Torrance, is The Mediation of Christ. And uh, that's, you know, the Torrance theology really dives into what we talked about last week, which uh, I encourage you guys, connect with, like, Seabax or Kruger, connect with... Uh, I mean, uh, well, Francois and Lydia are doing a study, the, the Detroits. But a lot of these guys are, they're, the summary is a lot, a lot of what we talked about last week, which is um, this vicarious humanity of Christ. Uh, or as we discussed last week, salvation is not just something that Jesus did, but, but who he is. Um, like we just read in Ephesians, all of heaven and all of earth in him, summed up in him, giving us a confidence uh, that, you know, all of the gifts, all the blessings we we're just reading about, every spiritual blessing is ours just because Jesus continues to exist. And so you're, so many are concerned, have I lost my salvation? Am I backslidden? How much faith do I have to have to see miracles? How much, you know, I, want, I wish I could be like that man or woman of God. All of that is, it, it's, it's silenced 
at the revelation of just in him that he his life is your life his faith is your faith so how much faith do i have to have but jesus believed for you but that's why we it, that's why we needed jesus right uh abraham it says abraham was justified by faith but so why did jesus even have to come if it's just you know if abraham could have enough faith without jesus or whatever no yeah, yeah abraham had a revelation of jesus that gave him that faith that gives him that faith you know if, if it's just you know so many have even preached salvation by faith and we end up having faith in faith come on. instead of faith in jesus you know <laughs> it's like even in worship right like there's so many things that were that are great things yeah. a lot of people love worship more than they love like the person you know you see these worship movements where it's all about getting the notes right and getting the chords we crescendo at the right point everyone will have an ecstasy you know and it's like dude stop worshiping the worship stop having faith in faith because those things will end up failing you ultimately you know you have a day when the music's bad and all of a sudden the glory's lifted you have a day when you're discouraged and you feel like your faith wasn't enough and all of a sudden your salvation is on this really rocky place but so so much of the Torrance Brothers' work, so much of like C. Baxter Kruger's work, and uh, I hope so much of what we're proclaiming is to not throw us back upon our faith, to not put us back upon our prayers, to not throw you back upon your worship or your anything, but Jesus Christ vicariously was not only God to man, but by becoming man, he's also man to God. He's not just the gift from God, but he's the response from man. It's like, for those of you who love to get whacked, you know, uh, he's not just the drink. He's the drinker. If you're like, I don't know how to drink. It's okay. He's the drink. He's The drink is drinking. Yeah, the, the author and perfecter of faith. The author and finisher. Yeah. Come on. Come on, man. Yeah. Shaga, laga, laga, laga. Can I recommend this book real quick? This book, Experiencing the Depths. Oh, it's good stuff. We're just doing some review, you know, these last couple of weeks and just kind of revelating, just basking in that. But um, I think it's just so key to, well, here, here's another, another thing I may not have mentioned the last couple of weeks regarding the vicarious humanity and helping us understand it. Like one of the keys for me and helping me realize the vicarious man was when someone asked me, why was Jesus baptized? Like, why did Jesus get baptized, right? He didn't have any sin. He didn't have anything he needed to be cleansed from. Um, I think there's only two explanations. Maybe he was doing it as an example for us. But if you follow that line of thinking all the way down, you end up with a work salvation. You have to just, like, you end up it, it, if you see Jesus as your example primarily, it's like what we talked about last week. You end up with kind of a moral and ethical salvation, which is end up saved by works. But there's another alternative, a much more glorious alternative. Maybe Jesus was baptized as us. Maybe Jesus was baptized not as an example for us, but because we were in him. And so he went down into that. When he went down into that water, that cleansing was on our behalf. And that little nugget makes you think maybe everything jesus did was as us and for us it's the co message it's the galatians 2 20 message but the, the baptism of jesus really helped me to understand because a lot of the other things you kind of think well you know maybe i get why jesus died like he was taking on his sins. i don't know why jesus was baptized per se um i don't know that one just for some reason like helped me to understand it but that really is the truth of everything he did, even his life, even his faith was him believing for you and as you. His death, you know, it says in Hebrews that it, uh, well, actually, let's, why don't we even look there? In Hebrews 9, it says, oh, yeah, if you're, uh, if you're not muted, just mute yourself unless you're, like, responding or, or talking because, yeah, that helps us out. Zoom etiquette, you know. You guys know the Zoom etiquette. But uh, in Hebrews, it says that it is appointed for a man to die once and face the judgment. Shing, ding, ding. Let's see. Where did it go? Who knows this one? It's like Hebrews 9, right? I bet Paul knows where this is. Ooh. 
come on anybody who grew up baptist this is like a bread and butter verse right yeah. uh we're gonna get there though this is your bible trigger where does it say as appointed for a man to die once uh i'm in here somewhere Anyways, it's in the Bible somewhere. But it, it says the point of 927. 927. Got it. Okay, I thought it was nine. Look at you guys. You got it. Teamwork. Teamwork. All right. Beautiful. So this, this verse is quoted all the time, right, throughout the church, especially those that are uh, trying to give an altar call, right, because they want to really make you afraid that you're going to die and face the judgment. Um, but it says, you get, they never read the verse right after it. <laughs> Context, please, right? In fact, let's, let's read the verse before and the verse after it. Hebrews 9, 26, 27, 28. Uh, For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment, that's usually where they stop. But so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. So it's like, it's appointed for a man to die once, after that comes the judgment, therefore Christ died. And so you, you get another like hint here. I mean, yeah. even when you look at the death of Christ, he wasn't dying his own death, right? He didn't deserve to die. In fact, uh, as the God man, he had to willingly give give up yeah. the ghost. It's not like he could be killed ultimately. You know what I mean? He but he died our death. Wow. So he was he he was baptized for our baptism. In fact, this is another place that the church often gets confused. They're like, are were you know were they saved before they were baptized? That's why a lot of people do infant baptism, which I don't have a problem with. As long as you're not doing it out of fear, like, oh, that baby would be yeah. cast into hell if he didn't get baptized. You know, so it, it's so many upset with these conditions because we haven't understood the vicarious humanity that he's not just an example for us. He wasn't just an external salvation gift, but he in himself, the in him message. Oh, there's just endless revelation. There's just endless. Yeah. You were you were in him. <laughs> He's not just an example for you. He, he's your, I mean, one way to say is a representative. He represented you. But I think it's even deeper than that because representative sounds like someone's just standing on your behalf. But in fact, you were there. Yeah. Mystically, all, all of humanity was included. Um, so yeah. yeah, there's one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Shaga, laga, 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 laga. So I just want to encourage you to continue to go down that rabbit hole. And that's what we're going to do today, just looking at Colossians. Going down this rabbit hole of what it means to be in him. Um, you know, what one of the Torrance brothers' favorite things to say is like when they ask you, brother, when were you born again? You know, this is 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born. The incarnation that he is, he is the new creation. Um, now that doesn't mean to discourage people from having experiences. Like some people kind of, they hear that and they think, oh, you know, well, then it doesn't matter if I have any experiences. Well, the whole point is for you to have experiences. <laughs> but on. these experiences are not based on you doing anything. You praying a prayer to get in. You even getting baptized or you, you know, heaven forbid, we think we're crucifying ourselves. How many, how many people in the church are all about dying daily, which is like wow. the opposite of what Jesus came for. He said, I can't, they may have life and life to the full. Yeah, there is a cross to bear but that cross actually is simply a revelation of what he's done and maybe how others respond to that reality but it's not you crucifying yourself you were in him his death was your death galatians 2 20 so i think we're getting it you know i think we're that was a lot of what we were covering last week and uh so i encourage you if you want to dive deeper into it check out some of this stuff the vicarious humanity colossians comes at it We'll include a lot of what we talked about, but comes at it from an, an, another amazing perspective. Uh, oh, man. De declaring, and this is what I want to unpack as we look at these first three chapters today. 
declaring to us that not only was, you know, Jesus's life, death, and resurrection uh, for us and as us in him, like the old song says, were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? You were there. <laughs> but Colossians then begins to say, you're still in Christ. So what does that mean? Like, yeah. uh, it's actually a new world, a whole new world, a whole new reality. We're not just living like Christ did 2,000 years ago. We're in the glorified, resurrected, co-seated, ascended Jesus now. And so what would our life be like? What is our life like? Jesus, the way, the life, and the truth. The truth. Jesus is the truth about, you know, where, who you are, you know, where you live. The, even this whole world we see around us, we see a natural world that's still affected by the fall. But there's actually something greater for us to wake up to than just what our eyes see. And we're not trying to deny the natural world. The natural world is still beautiful and awesome. But by us becoming aware of the truth, this is how supernatural miracles happen. This is how, this is how bodies are healed. When, when are bodies healed? When someone simply becomes aware that there's a greater truth than what they were perceiving with their natural eyes. Amen. And that truth is Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. That truth is Jesus Christ. By his stripes, you already were healed. We're not trying to get people healed. We're waking up to Jesus, who is the reality. Who, he himself is our healing. He himself is, you know, they said, they, you know, when he showed up for Lazarus, they're like, if you were here, our brother would not have died. And he said, he said, do you believe in the resurrection? You know, she's like, yeah, I believe that people will be raised up on the last day. He's like, no, no, I am the resurrection and the life. And if you wake up to me, there's no past day or last day. He is the last day. Like the old Sunday school answer of Jesus is really because the, oh, so good, so good. So I want to look at Jesus today through Colossians as the truth, as the way, as the life, uh, as the reality. So crack open your Bibles if you got one, and uh, let's put our eyes on this page. Whoa. Oh, uh, shing, ding, 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 ding. Uh, this, I mean, this stuff that we're experiencing, this life is, it's, this is why, this is the mystic secret. In fact, that's the phrase is right here in this first chapter. I want to start with verse, I mean, we could go through every single verse of Colossians. It's meaty, it's, it's dank. Um, but let's do verses 13 to 23 to start out with. Um, holy, holy, holy. Does somebody want to read this? Any of y'all got a, you want to be our lay reader there? Colossians 1, 13 to 23. We got 10 verses. Um, shing, ding, ding. If you got it, just proclaim it. Just unmute yourself if you want. And uh, everybody can hear you here. We got you on a, our Bluetooth speaker. Who's got it? I got it. All right. I got it right here. It's going to be the you. mirror version. <laughs> okay. That's fine, bro. 13 to 23. Yeah, 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 yeah. He rescued us from the dominion of darkness and relocated us into the kingdom where the love of his son rules. In God's mind, mankind is associated in Christ. In his blood sacrifice, we were ransomed. Our, redem our redemption was secured. Our sins were completely done away with. Come on. 15. Come on. In him, the image and likeness of God is made visible in human form. In order that everyone may recognize their true origin in him. He is the firstborn of every creature. Verse 16. Everything that is begins in him, whether in the heavenly realm, upon the earth, visible or invisible. He is the original blueprint of every order of justice, every level of authority, be it kingdoms or governments, principalities or jurisdiction. Original form of all things were founded by him and created for him. Come on. 
<laughs> 17. He is the initiator, initiator of all of things. things. Come on. Therefore, Therefore, everything, everything finds, finds its relevance, relevance and its pure and pattern, pattern only in him. I'm <laughs> 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 laughing. <laughs> The the Ecclesia Church (laughs) is the visible expression body of which Jesus is the head. He is the principal rank of authority who leads the triumphant procession of our new birth out of the region of the dead. His preeminent rank is beyond threat. God is fully at home in him. Jesus exhibits God's happy delight to be human. (laughs) Verse 20. Are we going to 23, Matt? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He initiated. I'm trying. (laughs) He initiated. The reconciliation of all things to himself. (laughs) Do we believe any of this? (laughs) Through the blood of the cross, God restored everything we just talked about in the last couple of verses that were originally designed. (laughs) Back into the harmony. Get it. The reign of Get peace it. now extends to every visible thing upon the earth, as well as those things invisible which are in heavenly realms. Verse 21. Your indifferent mindset alienated you from God into a lifestyle of annoyances, hardship, and labors. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yet, he has now he has fully now reconciled and restored you <laughs> back you to your back original your design. Yes. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Verse 22. <laughs> 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 he accomplished this in dying our death there in a human body. He fully represented us in order to fully present us again in blameless innocence. Face to face. Oh, with God. <laughs> With no sense of guilt, suspicion, regret, accusation, because all charges against you have been officially canceled. <laughs> Jubilee. Verse 23. You're the best reader, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I, lay, I just lay in it. You know, I just have a lay. All right. The lay reader. Remain under this influence. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, of what your faith knows to be true about you. Firmly consolidated in the foundation of your belief so that nothing can distract you from the expectation of the gospel. Yes. Expectations. <laughs> A hope that is consistent with what you have heard. Just as I, Paul, <laughs> perfect, am in the ministry to proclaim the one and only message that true with resonance in all creation under heaven. Amen. 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 God bless the reading of his word. (laughs) Amen, dude.
So good. So, I mean, this is another one, dude. You could just take endless ages to unpack here, you know, and the mystery of the gospel is made plain in so many of these just, I mean, a single chapter of the epistles of Paul. And I just want to continue to encourage us to spend some time there, just spend time there seeing what he's done, who he is. I remember growing up as, you know, uh, even, even my first experiences of, of Christianity, I, I was all about going out to the nations, you know, I went to India and lived in a hut and I, you know, serve the Lord, spreading the gospel. But when it really came down to it, I had a few crises of faith where I realized I don't even know what the gospel is. We were out planting churches and I was like, I don't even know what the church is. And I feel like so many that grew up in the church and certainly so many in the world have not spent time basking in just what does it mean to be in Christ? You know, what is, what is the gospel? As we went over in the first few weeks, you know, the gospel is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And why is that? Because Jesus, because of him. And so we start out with these, in these Colossians verses here, right from verse 13, it says, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And uh, it's, you know, I was just talking with someone the other day. They said something I thought was really beneficial. You know, whenever you see the word kingdom, you can think of like country. Because kingdom was, you know, old school language that would describe, you know, it's the kingdom of King James or whatever, the kingdom of Prince George or whatever it might be, you know. Uh, but in our modern day language, it's like a country. You've been transferred from the country of darkness, which so many of us still feel like we're there, you know, in so many ways. We've identified ourselves as citizens of a place where there's sin, lack, disease, you know, uh, relational struggles, hatred, judgments, strife, all this stuff. Right out from the beginning of Paul's epistles, he, he, will, he just gets right to the good news. Dude, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. All of heaven and earth have already been made one. Colossians begins to unpack the new world that we're in. That's what we're talking about today, this new reality or this new country out of the domain of darkness. I mean, how much of church is still spent fighting darkness? Yeah. trying to get people out of darkness no the gospel declaration is you have been delivered from the domain of darkness transferred already all of these are ed words past tense words delivered transferred to the kingdom to the country of his beloved son wow. Woo! the country of his beloved son so jesus is actually an entire country yeah jesus is the country that we live in what? it says in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins or i love one translation the remission of sins you know it's not just i i i say that i don't count them against you that's true god doesn't count your sins against you he's all you put you in remission you know what yeah. thank you lord wow. why because you're in him verse 15 i'm just going to walk through some of these verses verse 15 for you're in him because he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation so that's an amazing thing to contemplate like well who's the second born and who's the, who comes after that all of us all of us so as he you know like first john 4 says as he is so are you in this world and if you really want to get into it like some of us have you know you, you realize this was done not even two thousand years ago but from the foundation of the world for by him all things were even created to begin with Things in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible. Well, this could be also referring to the new creation. He is the new creation in which all of heaven and all of earth, all things visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. For he is before all things. I mean, it's okay to be obsessed with Jesus. You just have your vision. Jesus, like all I know is Jesus. All I know is Jesus because he's before all things. All things hold together in him. He all things were created through him and for him, and he is the head of the body, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Oh, uh, so dude, it's just we can't. That's too much. That's the old too song, much. you know, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. The things of earth grow strangely dim. It's actually 
basically right out of Colossians. Ding, ding, ding. Verse 21 says, you were once alienated and hostile in mind. Now, this is a classic, you know, passage for us walking in, in the grace message. We understand that the hostility was never God leaving us, God abandoning us. You know, like Dr. Seabach Kruger, one of my favorite quotes, he says, our Papa does not do abandonment. He never does abandonment. Man. Yeah. It's called his presence, not his absence. <laughs> yeah. We were simply alienated and hostile in our minds. Man. In our in our minds. We were not abandoned. We were not left. We we're not, you know, it's not this God forsaken world, you know. But he has now reconciled in the body of his flesh by his death. This is what we're talking about. Again, salvation is his person in the body. In the fact that Jesus is still a man. I mean, this is huge. Some are like, well, when Jesus ascended, he left his body behind. No, if he left his body behind, we're all in trouble. Because him becoming, <laughs> when the creator became a creation, all creation is brought into heaven. All, all of our salvation all the blessings that we've been reading about hinge upon him, just him being fully God and fully man. All right, there's so much here. Let's jump to the next chapter. We are going to get through two more chapters, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to read some of these and, and skip through um, different parts of Colossians 2 because there's so much. Colossians 2 is another one, dude. If you need a wake-up call anytime, you know, or something I'd love to read in most churches. They get bogged down in rules and regulations and all this stuff. Paul's like, dude, you've already been reconciled. You're already in the kingdom. You already have the fullness, as it says in verse 19. So Colossians 2, let's hop in here. Shing, ding, 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 ding. Uh, for I want you to know how great a struggle I've had for you and those at Laodicea and all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach the riches of the full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. Uh, what, what was Paul praying for? Not that they would get some, you know, new thing, not that they would get saved, not that they would be delivered, not that they would have enough faith for miracles. He said, I simply want you to be assured and to understand what you have, to understand Christ, to be assured of Christ. For in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one would deceive you through plausible arguments. A lot of plausible arguments in the church. Though I'm absent in body, I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ therefore as you received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him established in the faith <laughs> uh, verse 8 see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophies empty deceits according to human tradition according to elemental spirits of the world not according to Christ for in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily and you have been filled in him. Now, this is really, guys, this is the secret of not being hoodwinked by religion, right? Religion is all about uh, traditions, philosophies, what you need to add, what, what you need to do, what you need to gain. But Paul says, how do you, how do you avoid all this stuff? I mean, these are the things that make sense to the people of the world, self-improvement programs, how to become better. But he says, this is not according to Christ. In him, the whole fullness of, of the deity dwells bodily, and you've already been filled. Or in some translations, you are complete in him. The old KJV, you are complete. How do you stay free from religion? Religion has no appeal when you realize you're complete. When you realize the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ. And where is Christ? In you. The rest, oh, dude, the rest that comes from this, the freedom. This is where, shing, ding, ding, shaka, laka, laka. This is where the juice flows. Coming to rest. I mean, I, I can't read Colossians 2 enough, man. And, and in fact, in a lot of places I go in, it's like the first place I go. I say, hey, guys, let's not get captive to empty philosophies, 10 steps to a better 
this, seven steps to a better that. Let's rest in him where the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Verse 11, in him you are also circumcised. The death to flesh program is over. By a circumcision made without hands, by the putting off of the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. Isn't that interesting? It points back again. His, he died on our behalf. He was baptized on our behalf. Even his circumcision. Thank God we don't have to be circumcised. Why? Why is the, it, the Christian church reject circumcision? Not because it's just a, a weird and disgusting thing. Although, whatever. Uh, it, you know, if you believe in that stuff. But it's not necessary. Because he was circumcised on our behalf. With a circumcision made without hands by the putting off of the body of flesh, the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in his baptism in which you were raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. You who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God has made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, canceling the record of debt with its legal demands, setting them aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities. If you're still fighting the rulers and authorities, don't worry, they're, they don't have any weapons left. They've been disarmed, yeah. <laughs> like a Monty Python movie. <laughs> More than a flesh wound. Uh, <laughs> not only disarmed them, he put them to an open shame. I don't, there's just so many people that are still obsessed with demon hunting and demon fighting. Yeah, come on. They've not only been disarmed, they've already been shamed openly. He triumphed over them. How? In him. In him. Wow. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food, drink, which festival, which new moons, which Sabbath day. These are a shadow. Those were shadows, they're pictures, they're types. The Old Testament stuff is great. We've been talking about Passover, Jubilee, Promised Land, a lot of glory. When you know it's all fulfilled, that they were just shadows. They were shadows, they were types. The substance belongs to Christ. Ooh, the substance. The substance of all the old OT pictures. The substance of all the things they're trying to get you into with your self-help, yes. with, with religion, with, you know, yes. doing another thing to circumcise wow. yourself, doing another thing to fight another devil. Yeah, even words are just icons to what he's saying. Spirit. Come on, man. The substance. <laughs> yeah, the new blood moons. I mean, dude, it's just so funny. It, it, there's nothing new under the sun, you know what I mean? It's all, it's all been fulfilled, dude. Let no one disqualify you. We're at verse 18. If you're following on Colossians 2, 18, let no one disqualify you, even yourself, you know, right. sometimes we disqualify ourselves. Let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism. That really is most church practice right now is asceticism. Uh, it's most Pentecostal stuff you come out of, most charismatic, whatever. I mean, mainliners are usually a little more lenient about everything and try not to eat fish on Fridays or something. But <laughs> Most people that take themselves too seriously, it's all about asceticism. It's all, how much have you fasted? How much have you prayed? How did you get that anointing, brother? How did, you know, how did Benny Hinn get his anointing? Didn't he pass it on to this guy and that guy? And yeah. right, what about Reinhard Bonnke's thing? He must have, yeah. It says, let, don't disqualify yourself. Let no one disqualify you insisting on asceticism. The worship of angels are going on in detail about their visions. Puffed up, puffed up without reason by their sensuous mind, because we still are trying to impress ultimately ourselves, usually yeah. Yeah, make ourselves feel good about ourselves because we had some great encounter, some great experience. You're in Christ, the substance. You can't, whether you feel it or not, whether you know it or not, he's the way, the life and the truth. So, so many are passing judgment on themselves or others, trying to get people to fast more, do more, climb the ladder. What? Jesus is the ladder. Jesus is the door. He's the gateway. And he didn't have to climb. He came to you. That's why I love the communion services where they just put it in your mouth for you. Yeah. He put it, he, <laughs> yeah. 
you couldn't climb. I can, I can barely, I can barely move. You know, <laughs> I can't climb. But God had a lot to say about it, trying to cl climb our way to heaven and babble and different times. But shing, ding, ding, ding. Let no one disqualify you. Insisting on asceticism, worship of angels, going on in details about visions, not holding fast to one thing, just the head, Christ, from whom the whole body is nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, growing with a growth that is from God. Even your growth. We're obsessed with Christian growth. Listen, it's just natural to grow. Like you're, a tree's not going. It's like a baby's not saying, I hope I grow, I hope I grow, I hope I grow. It's up to the parents to feed the child, to nourish the child. Then the child grows naturally. Just grows. It's not up to the baby. It's not up to the child. He says, but if with Christ you died to all this stuff, you died to the elemental of the spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive do you, in the world, do you submit to its regulations? Like, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Referring to all of these things that are perishing according to simply human precepts and teachings. There's so much philosophy, dude, crowding up the church's mind right now, clogging us up, dude. What you need to do. There's always the newest book, you know. Clogging us up, dude. Clog yeah, like how to truly grow through your heart's vulnerability or whatever. I mean, it's, it's fine. You know, how to truly, whatever. You're in Christ. Let the river flow. Just let the river flow. Just, just look at him. Know that he's in you. All His virtue is flowing through you right now by zero efforts of your own. He said, these things have an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism, severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. They have an appearance of wisdom, dude. If you go and read like the modern philosophical books and just preach it with a couple of Bible verses, people will call you so wise. <laughs> or if you if you talk about fasting dude, it's the quickest road to success you know how much you prayed if you talk about your 40-day fasts you will be on the fast track to the charismatic platform because <laughs> no, nobody you know they're like wow they're impressed i couldn't do it if you ever try a 40-day fast most of you will never make it yeah. so you're impressed with the guy that says he did dude this is all self-made religion dude it's all bong dude it's like you know paul is like wow. has absolutely no value he says they have an appearance of wisdom dude yeah it looks like it, it has an appearance of wisdom yeah. wow promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severities and stuff this is why dude i'm telling you like i mean i'll just say it out right i have zero value for fasting I have absolutely zero value for fasting. I'm sorry if that offends you. I know there are a couple of New Testament fasts, but none of those things were commanded or really seemed to bear much fruit. Just tell you, this is a feast. This is a feast from beginning to end, feasting on his goodness. It's about eating and drinking. You're at the marriage supper. Jesus said, uh, how, how can the, the friends of the bridegroom fast when the bridegroom is with them? He said, there is a moment when you will fast. And I believe that he was referring to that the three days from when he died to when he rose again. But now we, we've been resurrected with him. We're seated at the table of the Lord, seated with him in heavenly places with our bridegroom. Yeah. How can you fast when you're with the wife, bridegroom? That's you're, in, you're in the promised land. You're in the Jubilee. Dude, and you study that stuff. dude. It's all about grapes on grapes. It's all about wine on wine. It's all, uh, now we're not just talking about earthly things, although that's great. We're talking about every spiritual blessing that you've been told you have to gain. Everything that you've been trying to get after, you're already there. You're in the country of heaven, you're eating and feasting and drinking. Dude. It's like that scene from Hook. You know, you sit, they're all sitting at the table. Peter Pan, first Peter can't see the food, you know. And nobody can see the food, but you're, we're eating this food they you know not of. When you begin to see it, it's like, why are these people so drunk, dude? They're drinking something you know not of. They're having a food fight. They're all seeing something that doesn't seem to be there. It's like, no, dude, we're not waiting for heaven anymore. We realize heaven is in this place. 
heaven is in this place. But it's not something we walk by faith, not by sight. It's not something that you perceive with your natural eyes. But there is another dimension here called the in Christ dimension. And uh, that's really the point of this whole Bible study today. And it's most clearly displayed in the next chapter. So let's hop in. I mean, I want you guys to behold that Jesus Christ himself in this room, wherever you're sitting, whatever room you're in, he is your actual reality. He's your actual true dimension. He is the true state. He's where you live. He's your new world. He's all that is true. Right where you sit, you're like, what's the truth about me? Jesus. What is the truth about this place that I'm in? Jesus. What's the truth about these people I see? Jesus. What is the truth about all the creation around us? All the cosmos. The truth is Jesus Christ. Now that might sound like a little odd at first. That's why we do these Bible studies. But yeah, so let's look at this. Colossians 3. <laughs> this will be our last little segment of scripture for today. And then maybe we'll do some questions and answers and stuff. Because I know, you know, this, oh this is like, there's just a ton here. Boing, 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 shing, ding, ding. I've been stuck in Colossians 3 for like a decade. I mean, I, I come back to it over and over. I, I kid you not. Just verse 1 to 11, I can't get enough of it. There is unfolding realms of ecstasy. If then... Or as we realize, you can also translate the word, word if as since. If then or since, because it's not a, used in a conditional way. But since then, or if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated, seated at the right hand of God. And what does that mean? Verse 2 explains it. What does it mean to seek the things that are above? Not that there's something far away. Above is not talking about spatial or distance. It's talking about the greater things. And seeking isn't about going somewhere else. Verse 2 explains, it says, setting your mind on the things that are above, or what? The greater reality, the greater things. Not something far away, but it's an understanding that what you see with your eyes is not all there is. What, what you, even what you think you know about uh, heavenlies, and second heavens, and fallen angels, there may be a truth to that stuff, but there's something greater. It's called Jesus Christ, but it says, Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things of the earth. Now, this is not promoting Gnosticism. We just got through a chapter that would demolish Gnosticism. It's not about saying the earthly is bad, that you need to deny your body. or It's saying there is a reality here. Call it, some might call it the earthly reality. Uh, you can call it the world. There's a greater reality at the same time, they, and they overlay one another. And the one where you're going to find bliss, life, ecstasy, all the blessings of heaven is the one that you don't perceive at first. You, you perceive with your natural eyes. Most people grow up and some call that sensuality where you, all you trust in is your senses or at least the five sense realm, what you've seen or the earthly things. And there, I, you meet some Holy Ghost believers that can spend a little more time like noticing the, the earth around them. But for most part... <laughs> Most of us still are too focused on circumstantial, external, or what Paul is saying here is the things of earth. Yeah, defining by circumstance, by experiences. Do we think that because we saw it with our eyes, that's the greater truth. Because we saw a sick person, therefore, Jesus Christ must not have healed the whole world. Because obviously sick people still exist. No, there's a, there's a place you're living right now called the earth, called being in the world, but you're not of that. And you see something that happened, that so, you're seeing something that's real called Jesus, right? None of us are seeing Jesus with our natural eyes right now. And a lot of us get confused thinking, if only I could see Jesus with my natural eyes and he would just sit here like, I wish Jesus would walk in that door and now I could sit with him. That would be much better. But Jesus said it was much better that he went away. Yes. He said, it's, it's for your good that I go. Why? Because I'm going to send the spirit. I'm going to send something that's invisible, that's far greater, which you can get much more closer to than if I was sitting next to you. Whoa. I can be in you and you could be yeah. in me. There's an intimacy. There's a there's a possession and there's a whole new world and it's this is what i mean colossians 3 1 to 11 unlocks it's it's too eastern for most western christians to think this way 
Eastern guys are used to kind of understanding that maybe there's multiple realities kind of or multiple dimensions or whatever, you know, or there's, you know, what you see is illusion. And I'm not promoting all that Eastern stuff. I'm just saying a lot of times us in our Western mindset, we're like, you know, we go from A to B to Z, you know, uh, through all the letters or very linear or whatever I can touch is real. Whatever is in front of me. And most Christians you meet are actually, they're weirded out by spirituality at all. The average Christian doesn't have, they don't even have spirituality, which is why most spiritual religions of the world or whatever think of Christians as kind of like, like a low on the totem pole because most Christians are afraid of spiritual stuff. It's so weird. We're like, we're filled with the Holy Ghost, but we're afraid of ghosts and spirits. <laughs> I'm not saying like go out and hunt ghosts. What I'm saying is become familiar with this realm. This is what, read verse two again. Setting your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are of earth. Beginning to see the unseen. Beginning to commune with Holy Spirit. And really there's nothing to be, see most of us are kind of afraid of the spiritual because we've seen weird spiritual stuff or we've seen scary spiritual stuff or we just fear what we don't understand. There's nothing to fear about being in the spirit. You know, John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day because Jesus actually saved the world and the cosmos. He's already dealt with all the scary stuff. If you happen to randomly encounter something dark, speak the name Jesus. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, you've got Jesus there who, uh, like our old buddy John Crowder said, has more power in his pinky than all the antichrists of hell. <laughs> it's like people talk about demons. I'm like, if you actually get a perspective, if you actually set your mind on the things above and see Jesus, demons are like flicking a little ant. Like, bing. We're so terrified of demon fighting. They've already been disarmed and yeah, triumphed wow. openly. Yeah. Yeah. Only when you, you know, when you give your attention to them and put your, you know, some sort of faith in them or whatever. But the spiritual realm is not a scary place. And it's not a difficult place for you to get to. It is your inheritance in him and it's filled with him. It's flooded. And it says, for you have died and your life is hidden now. Your true life is hidden. People don't see it. You might not even see it until you set your mind on things above. Yeah. You're awakening to something that's hidden. You've died your life. You want to, people are like, how do I stay high? Realize the life that is hidden with Christ in God. This is it. I mean, this is the bliss. This is the joy. This is the love of God. Every, every fruit, every gift is in you, in Christ, hidden in God, hidden. Whoa. But when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Now, that's, that is the great second coming. We are looking for, you know, I always talk about, it's not about distance or delay or pie in the sky for after you die. But we are looking for the second coming. But what happens at the second coming is what's already true about reality, about Christ, about you, will appear to all men will appear to, to all it'll be laid out it'll be laid before us yeah you don't have to wait for that day you're you're called to set your mind on the things above now you're called to look where christ is seated at the right hand of god now to understand to see that now but there's a day when every eye will see him there's a and that's the great eschatological hope that is the great hope of, of the glory when you know like first john says it has not yet been revealed who we are now but it says you are children of god now just has not yet been revealed but why wait that's the thing that's the joy of now people are like well if everybody's saved we're all included and everything's been done then why should i preach the gospel it's like well you you don't want people to enjoy this now they're like Man. it's like it's like <laughs> why should i preach the gospel if everyone's already saved well because they don't know they're saved they don't know these blessings. Why did Paul write about it? So that you would know about it. Why do we declare the truth? Well, the truth is already true. It's already, your life is already hidden with Christ and God. So we proclaim it that it's no longer hidden. But there's coming a great second coming of Christ when every eye will see. But our proclamation of the gospel now is that eyes can see ahead of time. Just like guys have done for generations, you know, Enoch and David and Abraham, they were seeing something before, before Christ. They were, they were seeing the Christ reality. 
Shing, ding, ding. Anyway, so when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. But it's already true. So it's like you can wait until the return of Christ to enjoy all these blessings. Or you, or you can enjoy the life of Christ. Now you could live saved from sin, saved from darkness. That's all disgusting crap you don't want anyways. It's like, well, why preach the gospel if no one's going to hell? Because people are in the living hell right now. Because they don't know the gospel. They're tormented. Shing, ding, ding. So, and then verse, so verse five and, and so on, it goes on saying, so put to death, or in some translations, reckon dead or consider dead what is earthly, the sexual immorality, impurities, uh, evil passions, covetousness, which is idolatry. For on the account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In, the, in these two, you once walked when you were once living in them, but now put away all anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk. Do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self seeing that you have put off the old self these are not the true things about you you're not a wrathful person you're not a sexually immoral person doesn't matter who you are that's true about you right now whether you feel inadequate or you feel like you're a great christian it's about what's true in him right so putting off all this stuff you know there's some people like well the grace camp doesn't talk about sin like, dude, no, I'll tell you all day, every day, sin will destroy your life. But you don't have to work hard to get out of it. That's, that's the thing. We talk about Jesus and glorify what Jesus has done. And you just begin to notice the ecstasy of him. And you're like, why would I want to go back to eating the dung when I can eat the feast? When I have the feast laid out before me. So I'd rather talk about the feast than talk about the dung all day. Like, you guys don't talk enough about sin. Like, we well, don't talk enough about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like you're, you're, you think we're at the wedding feast of the lamb, we're going to be tempted to go dig out of the toilet. Like, <laughs> these are the things, the wrath of God is coming against these things, not against people, but the wrath of God is wiping these things out. And there is a day when, you know, when every eye sees him and, and God is going to destroy every uh, root and fruit of those things out of people's lives. But you can walk in that now because you have, we're seeing that. You have put off the old self with his practices and have put on the new self, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Renewed back to the image and the likeness, restored to be as he is. So are we in this world. The new truth about you. I don't care if you do or not. Ding, ding, ding. We're coming to a close here, but I want to get to the really the meatiest part of all. I got it for you. And it wasn't good enough for us. Yeah. I thought that okay, we'll get to some responses in just just a second. Just give me like two more minutes and we'll do some interaction. Is that all right? Holy, I know you're just exploding with glory here. <laughs> we're going we're going on a bit, but look at verse 11 with me real quick, and then we'll do a little shing ding ding. Uh this is the one that fried my brain for for ages, dude. It says. For here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free. You can insert any title, any identity title that you had, you know. Here there is no sinner, there's no homosexual, there is no whatever, there is no Greek, there's no Jew, there's no American, there's no whatever identity you've owned, whatever that thing is. But Christ is all and in all. This is, I think, one of the chief revelations of Paul, revelations of the scripture. Christ is all and in all. We, we talk about darkness so much. We talk about our lack of faith. We talk about our struggles. They've all been absorbed into his body, killed, buried, now resurrected. All there is left is Christ. This whole new world truly is whatever is true about Jesus. The only things that are true now, which isn't that what he said? I am the truth. But all that is true is what's true about Jesus. Jesus is all and he's in all. So it's like, is Jesus even in the unbeliever? People ask, yes. It says all, all means all. Christ is all and in all. What are you saying that, you know, Yes, whatever, all that is in Christ is what's in you. You know, you're saying I'm not a sinner. You're saying that I don't have that struggle that I think I have. 
Well, who, uh, I mean, what is true? What Jesus says or what you think? And I think that that is so much of where we've gotten stuck in the, even in the body of Christ is, like it said, we're, because of, of we're enemies of God in our minds. You know, we're alienated in our minds. You know, ver going back to Colossians 1, uh, what verse was it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 21. 21. Alienated and hostile in mind. But the transformation comes by the renewal of the mind to what? To this reality. Christ is all in all. People ask, well, what about demons? Like, uh, you know, uh, do you still do you believe in the demonic? Do you believe in demons? Well, I love what Joshua Mills says. He says, I don't believe in the devil. I believe in Jesus. <laughs> but there is a realm where uh, devils and demons kind of interact. It's that lower world, but it's not the true reality that you can live from. And so if you're worried about devils and demons, look at Jesus, realize he's all in all. If there's a situation where that's not manifesting. You don't even have to speak the words, but you can or whatever. Just rest in that reality, that conscious awareness of Christ is all in all. Watch demons just, I mean, we yeah. we have places, I rarely cast out demons, but I see them come out just because we're saying Christ is all in all and people get freed. Yeah. Healings begin to manifest. Everything is in that cloud of Christ Jesus, the true reality. And so I guess we'll just kind of close on that and maybe move into some questions, but I just want us to, even as you think back upon the Bible study this week, you know, there might be a, a ton of nuggets or other things that Holy Spirit was dropping in, but may you contemplate, may you consider, whether it's the first time or for the millionth time, that Jesus Christ is all and in all, that Jesus Christ is the truth about everything, the true identity of every person, the true cosmos reborn yeah. the new creation yeah. all things functioning as they were created from the beginning what does restoration mean what does salvation mean? it means everything restored to its original design and to know that in a situation we're not going out to change the world we're proclaiming that it's already been changed in him we're proclaiming him we're not going out to save the world that's a lot of pressure that's a lot of burnout I'm not going out to save souls on the street. I'm declaring they've already been saved because what's true about Jesus? The most evil, quote unquote, person that you meet, the most, you know, wh whoever you may think of that seems to you that's not walking in, in Christ, <laughs> the truth about them is the same truth about you because that has nothing to do with your personal decision, your personal faith, your personal whatever. It has everything to do with what he did once and for all ultimately bringing all of creation to this state where it's Christ is all in all. As we started in Colossians 1, it's all by him, through him, to him. It's all for him. The old Sunday school answer is all about Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Thank you guys for joining. Um, you guys got any questions or responses or something? I know someone was already kind of overflowing there. Let's interact a little bit. Let's... Uh, Woo, let's take some time together. What's on your heart? What are you feeling right now, guys? <laughs> Shoot. Well, when you begin to speak, you begin to speak that truth. Mm. Yeah. Let me mute myself oh. and then you can talk. How about Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, let me turn my head over here. Let me get on Matt. Dad's going to share a minute, but we're in the same oh. space, so we're feeding back. Oh. You begin to speak that truth to people, and it's life to life. You begin to just speak to the Christ that's in them, because this whole idea is so <laughs> radical, why he became invisible, and why we were beginning to understand all things visible are made from this invisible source, and we're tapping into it. He's opening our eyes, our spiritual eyes, our understanding to see as we proclaim this word to someone who hasn't heard or doesn't know or doesn't believe or hasn't really experienced it, you begin to speak that life to them and they start to light up because it triggers yeah. something in them that's already there. Yes. When you tell them how much they're really loved by the God of the universe or, or you just say a word to them like you're awesome 
and yeah, inclusion like, words, you know, yeah, rather than exclusion. So much of our language has excluded people. Because you're just telling them you're seeing something in them that maybe no one else has recognized. I mean, I've, we've spoken to like gangsters and tell them that they're awesome. Absolutely. And they'll start yes. to weep like, dude, nobody's ever spoken to me like that. Before. Yeah. And to witness that <laughs> it comes alive. It's just like fuel on the fire that's there. Come on. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, it's inclusive language, right? Uh, he's in all and all are in him. So fun. What else are you guys seeing or thinking? What's going on? Ding, ding, ding. Such an honor to be with you all. Hey, Matt, could you... And you were... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Matt, could you kind of talk to the, like, the Calvinist um, election in Christ? And also then you have like the contrasting Arminian free will. And so if God's love is to be real, it has to be, we have to participate in it, but also we were elected vicariously in the incarnation. So where does this, is, uh, is it a middle road between the two or like, how do I take this, this subjective reality that really does affect my life and my family, but also see myself objectively and vicariously um, one with him right now? You know what I mean? Like how there's that yeah, kind of yeah, paradox, yeah. but it, it's not a paradox when you can kind of find the middle ground. Could you, I just think that's uh, something that I think I'd like to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Dude, hallelujah. Just getting hit with the wave, bro. <laughs> no, I love that question, man. Um, I'll just give a short answer that maybe we can come back to it at the end. I think we covered it in in Christ uh, reality part one a little bit, but it's just, it's in him, right? So uh, Calvinism and Arminianism both find their conclusion by realizing Christ made the decision so that on our behalf, that will satisfy the, well, it won't satisfy an Arminianist if they want to stay in Arminianism, but Arminianists are all about our decision for Christ, but it's really Jesus made the decision on our behalf. So that kind of helps us understand the Arminianist take, or at least satisfy it, hopefully. The Calvinist take is all about choosing, like being chosen. And what Ephesians says over and over in the Epistle of Paul is that, 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 that we, were, we were chosen in him. I don't know, somebody's feeding back. But all, all of humanity was like, Jesus Christ is the chosen one. So Jesus Christ satisfies Arminianism by being the, the one who responds. He made the, the decision, and he also satisfies Calvinism by being the chosen one that all are included into. Um, yeah, as far as getting to the subjective reality of it and our participation, it's like simply just being aware of that. If you're actually aware of it, not just intellectually like, oh, I know this is a fact, but just like contemplating that in my body, like I'm expecting Christ to manifest, like in my personality, in my will. I know like Christ is, is manifesting in me, just being aware of that, not even by trying to believe it, but you know, faith is a gift. It's all a gift. Even awareness is a gift. So as Holy Spirit reveals it to you, it does subjectively manifest. That's your revelation about the man. Yeah. I don't know if they can hear you. Can you hear? Oh, well, I'm going to exit. Hold on. I'll come back. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Oh, appreciate it. Yeah, sometimes a connection will just be like, like weird for some reason. I don't know. Oh yeah, maybe. Hey, is this? Can you hear me? Is this any better? Is this yeah, better? You sound, you sound great. Yes. I can't hear you guys, but at least I could hear. I wanted to read something that exactly kind of answers that question that you had, Paul. I hope it helps. It's from um, Jean uh, Guyon, and it's Experiencing the Depths of Jesus Christ. Uh, we had to read it for Kena. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm sure Matt knows Love it. Um, Highly recommend, so, yes. Yeah, really good stuff. Um, she says in here, and this is actually funny because it's where I left off, you need only believe 
that God dwells in you. This belief and this belief alone will bring you into his holy presence. Do not allow your mind to wander, uh, to wander about, but hold it in submission as much as possible. Never doubt your, never doubt your Lord's deep love for you. And, you know, it goes on, but she's touching on something that is very hard for most Christians to swallow, you know, like, wait, you don't have to believe in Jesus. Jesus is huge, you know, but it's just something to chew on. Um, just believing that God dwells in you um, can do something, can really stir up. Maybe it'll increase your faith in Jesus, but I was just trying to imagine what would it be like if I never heard the story of Jesus and how would God reveal himself to me? And I believe he would regardless. So it's just something to chew on. I wanted to throw that out. It's uh, experiencing the depths of Jesus. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I, I, really love, I love that book and so many of the mystics, you know, but they, they also do it. I think the torrents is, and, and what we're kind of talking about this in Christ, you know, in Jesus yeah. Christ message yeah. brings greater clarity okay. in the sense okay. that even there, it's like, it is good. I mean, it's still one of my favorite mystical books of all time. And there's so much whack on it, you know, but, uh, well, like, like something John Crowder often talks about is that, you know, most of the mystics didn't have the, la the last 500 years of reformation theology to help clarify a lot of things that they were experiencing, you know, um, you brought up kind of two points. One is a whole other awesome subject in itself. Is what about those that never hear the name Jesus? That's that's a beautiful topic because there actually are some beautiful answers there. And you were touching on some of them. But the other, I think, is, you know, even in all of our simplifying, sometimes, like for the Word of Faith movement, for example, which I love, but, you know, they've simplified it down to all you, all you got to do is believe, which is beautiful, but still... You meet so many word of faith folks that come out thinking it's about how much you believed, yeah. you know, and, and that ends up, I've met so many beaten down folks over the years. They're like, I just can't believe enough, man. I just didn't have enough faith for that thing to manifest. And, you know, not realizing that in this vicarious man, we've been given his faith. Uh, we've been given his response. And that's a scandal because the first thing people think when you say that is like, oh, you're a universalist. Well, I am a Christian universalist, but that's a whole other can of worms. But they get scared, like, well, there's got to be some condition, you know, which is what we covered in, in the In Christ Reality Part 1, and it's covered in the first couple chapters of this book. I think with a lot of the mystics, if they'd had the theology of this stuff, and I know a lot of people pit mystics against theologians, but they're not, dude. Uh, you, you have it all in Christ. You're a mystic. You're a theologian. You, you've got the fullness, you know, if you love nature, you love nature. If you love music, it's all there. They're not against each other. They're all included. But I think if we, you know, as mystics, who I love, you know, Madame Guyon and Teresa Elia, St. John of the Cross, you know, Julian of Norwich. But most of these guys, if you actually, you, you, you hear their mystic stories and you think, what did they do to get what they got? And, if, and then you listen to them, you'll end up back on another, well, this is what you've got to do. And uh, through the revelation of like the torrences and just, I think it's the revelation of Paul and the simple gospel that so many of us missed for ages. But we realize like, it's not even, I just have to believe it's literally the, the word I use is just an awareness that Holy spirit gives us as a gift to walk in all this stuff. So it's like, yeah, but how I want to walk in it more. It's like, that's a great desire. You have absolutely no ability or need to try to make that happen. Now, that doesn't mean go and try to run the opposite direction, you know, because some people are like, well, if I can't do anything, I'm just going to go get drunk and play video games in my parents' basement, you know, <laughs> or something stupid like that, you know. But this, you know, this revelation is a pure, unconditional gift in Christ, even of our faith, even of our submission. You know, this is where... It, Every little stream seems to put it back in some conditional thing. All you have to do is yield, or all you have to do is submit, or all you have to do is surrender, all you have to do is believe. No, Christ invalidated all of that. He did everything for you. We're simply becoming aware of what he's already done. Even the awareness is already true in Christ. So people are like, it doesn't make sense to me. It's okay. 
this life isn't about a systematic theology of making everything make sense to you. It's always easier than you thought. It's always more of a gift than you thought. And I know that, man, that, that rubs against our Western evangelical charismatic background so much. We want to come up with something. We want to say, well, it's really easy. No, it's not. E it's actually not easy. It's effortless. It's, it's really simple. It's just believe. It's like, no, it's actually simpler than that. It's like, <laughs> he believed for me. Well, but what's my part? And I think that's, you know, that is a bit of what uh, Paul, Paul Wisnowski, is that how you pronounce your last name? Or I would butcher it. What Paul was hinting at. Yeah, but what about my participation? Well, the Torrance brothers use the word participate. But what I love about that word is participate means it's already happening. Yeah. You're already, you're already walking in holiness. Yeah. Now you're like, wait, you can tell that to a sinner. Like you can tell that to, you know, a drug dealer, gang leader, rapist, murder, that they're already walking in holiness by proclaiming that they're already included in everything that Christ is and has. That is the, the gospel that has the power to transform. Because that word has faith. Yes, that gift of faith comes to them through that gospel. And so you're like, well, but that's, it's not fair, you know? Wow. <laughs> or, Say well, that again, Matt. You know, like, <laughs> that was so, I mean, good. This is the, so good. Well, this is the mystery that we continue to unpack over and over. Like everywhere we go, it's what people cannot comprehend. And so it's the most offensive thing. It's, and it's the hardest thing to comprehend because we're like, how, what about my part? What, well, Jesus is your part. Yeah, but I've got to at least believe in him, right? Like, no, Jesus believed for you, but okay, then I just submit to his belief. It's like, no, by him and from him and to him are all things. If any part of it initiated and originated in you, at the end of the day, then you get the glory for that. At the end of the day, you can boast in that. What you probably wouldn't want to, but you still could. And the ultimate thing is that this is all God's doing all the way through. He saved us single-handedly. He wakes us up single-handedly. It's, it's a scandal that I still can't, you know, if someone said, the only problem with this gospel now is how to put it into language. <laughs> How to put it yeah, Matt, words. the yeah. thing that keeps coming up is just what about hearing God's voice? Like you, you hear that a lot in the church too, like discernment and hearing God's voice. And I, how, how would that tie into it? That's just sort of what religion is kind of popping into my head right now is like, you know, the discernment. Well, hearing God's voice is awesome. Like every one, Following every one of you already hear God. Yeah. Every, every one yeah. of us already it's such hear God. A, so, thank you. Yeah. You're, you're already there. You're already hearing God. Yeah, no, it's just, well, it's beautiful. You know, I love talking with like random people on the street and just saying, you know, when did you first hear God? You know, when did you first, or remember, remember how God's been with you through your life. I'm not bringing Jesus to anyone. You know, Jesus has never forsaken us, never left us. You know, our Papa never does abandonment. So they just might not have clarity. That's why we preach the gospel. We bring greater clarity, but they're already in union. They're already hearing God. I mean, you meet random people. They, they remember that angel story they had from when they were a kid or that dream they had or that time they just felt something that they couldn't explain. Everybody has that. Um, we're usually just con conditioned or told we're crazy for yeah. talking about it or, you know, we, we shove it all down. But we all, you know, that's actually the, the basis of the new covenant, right? If you read Hebrews 8, it says, I'll remember their sins no more, put my laws in their hearts and minds. And it says, they will all know me from the least to the greatest. That's not a prophecy for the future. That's the new covenant. That's, crazy. That's what we're in right now. Yeah. That, that was a prophecy from, uh, from the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, it's where we're, where we're at. Everyone knows God. I mean, that's crazy. Everyone hears God. We just might not notice sometimes, you know, or we've been told to shut that down or whatever. But God never stops speaking and revelating ah it's good news guys it's it really is it's juicy what else, what else somebody somebody else what's burning in your heart we got time for a couple more um, maybe i know some um, of you some of you already had to go but uh, what's up friends Joanna. when you when you were talking about all the religious stuff um yeah 
It was so funny because uh, the church I'm visiting is uh, ICF and we have a next yep. step culture and I'm always like, oh, I don't have to do any next step <laughs> Amen. because Jesus already did it. <laughs> yes, <Wow>. exactly. <laughs> you just gotta, you know, it, it's funny though, because I do appreciate the passion and it is important, the emphasis on encounter that a lot of these churches are carrying. You know, we're, this message is not to de-emphasize encounter or experience. It actually releases you into uh, greater encounters and greater experiences. Um, so we're not, you know, telling people don't, don't experience and don't have encounters. No, we're saying you're, you're in them already. Just notice, just notice what's going on and notice, be aware to what you're already included into. And so... It is a challenge though when you you know if I go to churches like that too often the first thing I want to say is there's no more steps <laughs> yeah. the steps are over he stepped into us you know but then you know you, God shows you wisdom and how to communicate too but and I, yeah. I often value yeah. what they're in you know but yeah I I usually don't hang out too friend. long in those places. One of my best friends always is talking about ah. Uh, I'm so happy when I um, understand the love of God fully and can accept that either she accepts the love or she didn't. There was like, uh, there, there's yeah. so much lies in, in religious churches or charismatic churches. People are getting brainwashed. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you're right. That's that not is one of the truth. toughest things. <laughs> I know. I just bless you in that place where you're at to just know, you know, how to walk, whether with them mm -hmm. or, or avoiding that situation. You know, each one of us are different points. You know, you know, your tipping point where you're like, if I hear this too much, like it's actually going to affect my personal life. But then there's others that God really, you really know you have the grace to stay in that without, you know, going back to asceticism and all that Colossians 2 BS that we were talking about. Yeah, will worship. Oh, yeah, can you read it? Uh, it's hard for me to read the comments. Sorry, guys, like on my little phone while I'm trying to see your faces. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Melinda is asking about like the sending of Holy Spirit, um, how Jesus said it was better if I go away. And uh, there are there are some that start to get this message and people do get a little confused thinking that like, well, if this is all done from the foundation of the world, then Christ was never mattered if Jesus Christ came or if Holy Spirit was poured out because we all always had the spirit. We we're all always one with God. And there are some that get a little confused about that. I mean, it was still necessary for Jesus to manifest in time and space and to do something in, in this, yeah, in, to, to live, to die, to resurrect, because this physical world matters, time matters, you know, um, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that people didn't have Holy Spirit, at least in some hidden way, but there wasn't that widespread revelation of it. It's the same with what Jesus did on the cross, like, you know, he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It needed to manifest in time and space. And it still matters. And something did actually happen at the cross and at Pentecost. So don't fall for some of these like kind of pseudo new age cults. There are there are a few that are kind of dipping into our circles. Yes, like it's, getting, it's getting it's getting a little yeah. confusing. Sorry for interrupting, yeah. but I, I've never no, heard you explain fine. exactly how you just yeah. said it. Yeah. That yes. coming in space and time was necessary. Matters. I got to yes. tell you, you're the only one that I have heard say this, and I'm getting a little. I was getting confused. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Well, I I know. Um, just to encourage you or point you to some other guys, I know that uh, Baxter Kruger emphasizes this, uh, Crowder, uh, I know our buddy Brett Endress, certainly the Torrance brothers. I mean, you read the Torrances, dude, it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, so, it, but there are some others that I'm not going to name their names just because oh, okay. it's not worth it, but you know, you know who they are. 
you can yeah. tell when you're being fed yeah. something that's like it does it does it point to jesus still you know what i mean does it point to the glories of his life death yes. resurrection yes. Okay. then you know there's something to it when you find jesus christ being de-emphasized you know, even, even some will just talk about the Christ, the Christ, the Christ, but never hear about Abba, Jesus, yeah. and Holy Spirit. It's like there's a yes. Christ consciousness yeah. cult. There's a, there's a lot of new age talk about, okay. you know, our oneness and union. And any true spirituality is going to emphasize union, you know. And so, but there's a lot of confusing stuff. And I've, I've met a lot of people. They're like, I am God, you know. And then next thing you know, they're just like, Whatever. I mean, there's just so much weirdness that comes after. Yeah, yeah. Tribe, you know? I, I, so. I, I, I do love all the other guys you mentioned. Yeah. But I, maybe it went over my head, or the way it, it was explained, I didn't pick up on it. But sure. yeah, well, you know, Brett, I did hear a couple of weeks ago say something like this, and that's when yeah. I started getting a little confused about was it two thousand years ago or was it before yes. the foundation of the world? Right. Well, and the answer is yes. <laughs> if you find if you find someone that if you find someone that de-emphasizes one or the other, they they are missing out. And so you want to you want to emphasize both. You know, um, one is you know the eternal. I mean, how do you how do you comprehend a God that lives in time and space but also created time and space? You know, so we it, it the fact that this is a little like confusing it's okay we're all mystified in a way god's not the author of confusion but when you encounter we're talking about the most massive like things that have ever happened in, yes. in cosmic yes. history so <laughs> it's okay i'm still mystified in ways and like i said putting this stuff into language i think the only thing to to avoid is if you find people that are de-emphasizing the life death and resurrection of jesus if you find that you know, there's teachers that are, it's all about just cosmic Christ, or it's all about just oneness, or it's all about yeah. Yeah. just God as a concept, or they start using just the word source all the time, you know, rather yeah. than a personal yeah. Jesus. But, you know, there's this, this, this has crept into some of our streams. Yeah, but, but they're, they're it, the easy, I think they're a little easier to dismiss. <laughs> I, yes, again, yes. I won't say any names as well. Right. That's you stuff to, it's fine. <laughs> easier to dismiss. But this but issue this was issue getting was like, getting like my favorite teachers my favorite sound teacher like some are saying something slightly different about the Holy Spirit. So the hence yeah. the confusion. Yeah, the other ones are easy yeah. to dismiss, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's just interesting, though, you know, uh, there are plenty of passages in the Old Testament that allude to the fact that Holy, I mean, the whole earth is filled with his glory, you know, that, that Holy Spirit yes. is everywhere. And yes. if our, if our father is truly not a deadbeat dad, then there was never a time when our father left us, you know? And so that's important. That really is important for the human heart to know, like, well, God didn't just leave us for 4,000 years to like work it out. You know, he's not that kind of God, you know? And so, that's where, but then some people start to emphasize that and you start to get confused. You're like, well, what did Pentecost matter? You know, I think what helps us to understand is just to know that all this stuff did need to manifest clearly in time and space to affect um, both forward and backward in time. You know, um, they call Jesus appearing the fullness of time. So it's, you know, all that stuff that may have been true even before Christ was still true because of Christ and it, because of his coming. Okay. You know, and so... Okay. Where some people get confused is when they think, well, it was just always true. Therefore, the life, death, and resurrection, ascension, uh, sending of the Holy Spirit was not necessary. That's when I think your 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 yes. spirit is rightly yes. a little disturbed by by that. You know? Thank yeah. thank you so much. Thank you for doing no, this. No, it's fun. Thank thanks for everyone that's still hanging with us. You know, it's it's beautiful. These are the. I mean, I love it. Yeah. To talk and discuss the the greatest things in. <laughs> the cosmos you know <laughs> to revelate on christ Whoa. there's something about this i mean this 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 mystical fellowship that we're caught up in and yet Hi, Amy. We, we're realizing that we are we are in the form right from the very beginning to fill this form in time and space we are yes yep. Yeah. And yet we're yeah. beginning to be enlightened to the idea that we're in an eternal realm here. There is yes. we're not necessarily limited by 
time and space. Time. So, it's, so it's yes. It's, it expands exactly. our consciousness, That's and we have right. to be able to think, to think like he like you know what he knows to be able to even begin to comprehend it. it. And it's mind blowing. Yeah, we were talking about that movie Arrival. That's a that's a fun one on these. I don't, we don't have time to go into all of it, but if you want a fun one that kind of talks about this time and eternal reality, like watch the movie Arrival. It's pretty good. <laughs> Who else? Anybody else got anything before we before we gotta go here? So good to see you all. I'm sure your hearts are all burning with revelation and shing dings. Love you, shing dings. We've we've covered a lot. What are the shing dings? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much there's so much meat here. But you guys meditate on that too and then present some questions. You know, if you want and then this week present yeah. some questions for the next week we can answer some stuff. Yeah, we love questions, you know. A lot of the church is afraid of questions, but I think the truth prevails, you know. So so I feel like what if all of you are completely off and totally wrong? <laughs> it's okay ask away I, let's examine the truth i know th th there's this phrase um that i've heard a little bit where um it said before before jesus was um the word made flesh that he was always the word to become made flesh and and i'm not sure I, i'm not sure if i if i had heard that unpacked a little bit more but i think Maybe it speaks to like a little bit of a salvific quality to the um, anticipation that that God has. Yes. To, yeah, just <laughs> like how we would how we would respond just in creation. Um, so yeah, so like so um, I know for me, my mind gets a little bit like when we talk about space and time. I'm like, oh, it starts to confuse me a little bit. But uh, yeah, so like I always found that really helpful. Um, but, but, but also to but say also that, to like, see in, that, like in, in the, in the, with the idea of relationship, idea of relationship that, 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 that there is this there real, is this like, back and forth. Back. <sighs> Sorry, I'm going to stumble over my words a little bit, but, but to say that. Um, ah, sorry, I, I'm losing it a little bit, but it, it's it's to say that there actually is a real relationship, and that the incarnation was always the plan, um, and there was always this um, anticipatory um, Christ stepping into our fallen will, our fallen nomic will, and, and setting that right. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, but <laughs> I get a little bit mixed up with it, but. Um, and, then, no, and then the other piece is that good. like when C.S. Lewis talks about space and time, he, he says that every moment is like now, now to God. Like 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 God doesn't see things that are happening happening in history as past, present, and future, but that every moment is happening as if it's now, with with the standout. Um, like, like Christ's his life, his death and crucifixion, that being the standout now moment that encompasses all. Yeah, yeah. And so, sorry, I'm kind of, I'm kind of saying this, and, and I've had a lot of time to think about it, but as I kind of try to piece some things together, it, it does uh, um, stretch my imagination a little bit, and I don't know if I explained it totally right, but um, those were just... No, that's it, bro. That's it. Yeah. It's fun, dude, contemplating the, the mystical realities of the universe, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. No, one of the yeah, points man. you hit on there. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was going to say, for, you, go further on what he was hey, Matt, saying. Um, mute your mic, Matt, because you're getting reverb when your mic's open and somebody's talking. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, go uh, ahead. We hear you. We, we can oh, okay. Hear you, yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. 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 Yeah, no, because uh, early my early days of all this, I, I just realized I had to be willing to accept mystery. Um, yeah, there's the other things that we don't, you know, we were talking earlier about the space and time and how it was necessary for Christ to come in and into space and time uh, and like, uh, like uh, put a, a warp in the time space reality in order for this all to happen but it's like you're like well how did that happen well 
if we're willing to believe that Christ was born of a virgin, you know, it's like, but then you can't believe some of the other mysteries. Well, it's like, well, what's the point, you know? Um, or, you know, there's, a, there's already a, a, a mystical aspect to it already. So, I mean, and we in the West especially need to, it's hard. I mean, I, I, my business is based on science and logic, and I have to work with engineers and chemists. And, and so I especially have to, you know, know how to turn my brain off, uh, so to speak. Not turn it off, but uh, access a different part of it, I guess. Uh, but anyway, that's just my, my two cents on that, uh, being willing to accept mystery. So anyway. That is super good, Bob. That's it. Whatever that's worth. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Can someone explain the Trinity to us? <laughs> How is God three and one? <laughs> There's so many things we want. We want to be able to. We want to be able to systematize it. You know, systematic theology was always just a funny <laughs> phrase to me. You know. <laughs> I heard it said that if, if Jesus didn't ascend, we wouldn't have been ascended. And if he did ascend, then we have ascended with him. Therefore, we don't look to Jesus. to We don't need to all crowd around in the upper room. This is the, this is the main point, I believe. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, because this, this is out there. We're talking about mystical secrets here. But the, the point I see of him going away that he might send the comforter is not that the comforter wasn't always there. It is he is the life giving spirit. Without the without the Holy Spirit, we would be dust. That we would not be animated. We would not be living this life we have now. So, wow, he he has come in uh, to us in our in our minds, in our knowledge, our awareness of him. If Jesus was sitting in this room right now, he would be like it'd be like if um a Backstreet Boys had a concert or something, you know, or like Donald <laughs> Trump was sitting in this room. You're like, oh my gosh, it's Please Donald no. Trump. You know, you're like, it's Backstreet Boys. It's Jesus Christ. You know, and we would just be like, I just need to sit, lay, hang out with, woo. You know, we would be like, we would be like, who wants to get closer? If I could only touch his garment, I would be healed of this disease. The comforter comes to enlighten our mind of the reality that we don't need to see a Jesus apart from mm -hmm. ourselves. And that was what we received by his going away is not that he, he did a work. He, he died a real death, our death. He raised a real as man, as man. He ascended as man. That's, these are real works that were important in space and time. But the fact of why he left would be to have us not look outwardly, but to see him when we look in the mirror, <laughs> to see him when I look at you, all your little squares. I just see hey, Jesus. I'm Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, you know, the Jesus within. And a lot of people who have seen him, you know, around the world and stuff, they all see him in a different way. And I think it's something to do with your culture, how you see him as well. Because Liz, right, when she see Jesus, he was in a brown robe, which would be like a friar. She was from, she grew up in a Catholic faith. So, and, you know, and then somebody who's Jewish, they see Jesus like a rabbi. So, you know, they've seen him in different, like, and I think it's to do with whatever culture, you know. But I've never seen him, but I've had wee glimpses, you know. That type of thing. And I'm always saying, I want to see you, Jesus. I want to see you. And then I have all these imaginative thoughts and pictures. And it's really crazy. Like, <laughs> it's like, that doesn't look like it. the Jesus I'm imagining. <laughs> you know, it's like... So I was thinking about, he replaced me. He died in my place. And I mean, that's wow. I mean, mind blowing. He's... In a sense, he's me as he is in heaven, so am I on the earth. I mean, that's like, wow, <laughs> as he is, you know. But then I had I had this whole thing. I've been sort of drunk for three days. 
I come from very religious background, you know, like religion. And I even the word mystic, I'm so frightened of the word, ah, mystic, I can't touch that. But, uh, you know, because I, I grew up in a hellfire church, you know, so to me, even the word mystic, and I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having mystical experiences, and I'm like, thank you, Lord. I'm, thank you, Lord. I'm so strong. Mm. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Love you, Shirley. Love you, Shirley. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> She met. She met me she on Doc. Oh, that's cool. That's flavors. awesome. I can feel it. I can feel it coming off you, Shirley. You're just emanating. You're emanating. Uh, uh, detox. Detox feels good. Yeah. We need it. We need it. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the shamrock, the Irish shamrock is three in one. The shamrock. Yes. <laughs> Love the shamrock. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rolling a big shamrock shake this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Evening, wherever you may be. Morning. It's all green. <laughs> Everything's green. <laughs> We've been stirred into the three in one shamrock shake, yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> and that's what it's all about. Oh. Well, thank, thank you guys here. so much for your interaction. You know, thanks for joining us and, uh, we're we're gonna do a few things this evening here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. But you know, I think in future weeks we can do more interaction and Q and A's or just drink in it. I'm just thinking yeah. as we're ending here, it's so so perfect to just see that shamrock shake of our, <laughs> of our Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Somehow we're all stirred into the midst of that, you know. And uh, woo, we're finding ourselves in Him, you know, and we're finding yeah. Him in us so and we're not looking for another great encounter or experience but we're waking up to the fact that we are in that the experience that abba and jesus and holy spirit are having with one another yeah. that yeah. you know that whoo we are in the shamrock <laughs> so maybe maybe as we close just picture you know i just keep getting this picture it's like we're just beholding we're just beholding and that incense is arising mm. and uh we're beholding him as in a mirror, you know, Woo, the scandal uh -huh. of beholding him in the mirror. And there's just incense and the mystery is being explained to our spirit, being explained to our heart in ways that we still can't even sum up in language, can't even put into human yeah. language. Woo. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> but we are in, you are in. <laughs> No matter who you are, no matter how you felt this week or today, we're in, we're yes, in, we're yes. in. Amen. Amen. So live like those that are in. Amen. Amen. We're Eddie's, Eddie's. Take a belly button. Love ball. you, Shirley. Belly belly out. <laughs> Love you, Daniel, out. Joanna, Bob, Bob, Anissa. Out. I see you, Ronnie. Good to see you. Love you. Love you guys. Lynn, of course. Mr. Nickel. Sandra. Paul. I love Paul. Love you, Mitch. Thanks for joining. Danny boy. <laughs> Mine's in the romper what's room. Your, Daniel, what's your beloved uh what's your beloved fiance's name? I forget. I've I've seen you on Facebook. Oh, you're trying to unmute. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sato me. She's Sato. Sato. Descended from Can't the wait island. to meet you in person. <laughs> you guys, your love is so infectious. I just see you on Facebook and I can't wait to meet you, Sato. So much bliss coming out of you guys. Mm. So much glory. Yeah. Thanks for Thank joining you. us today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you on this. Shing ding ding. <laughs> Talk to you all soon. Hey, oh, we're going to take next week off. We won't be here next Sunday, okay? We're going to it's Easter. Um, a bunch of people are doing stuff with their families and stuff. We'll be back the week after. So we'll take Easter Sunday off. But uh, 
enjoy your co-resurrection. <laughs> have a have a wonderful holy holy week. It's holy. Uh, like like every week. La, 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 la. <laughs> let him out. Hey. Hey. Let him out. 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 Oh.